You know, right here I have a, a journal, and I don't know how many of you have journals, but I always have a journal. I, I write a lot. I'm constantly writing. There's something about writing something that I just don't get from hearing it. Um, I'm going to give you an example. I, uh, yesterday I spent, I spent probably two, three hours just writing down vision and writing down goals for 2021. And the great thing about writing down visions and goals is that it gives you hope for a future. It's so easy to get overwhelmed with your present circumstance and start thinking nothing's going to change. And, and you can get overwhelmed by your present state. And you can almost look at your future with fear and worry and anxiety. But if you spend a little time with God, God will give you vision beyond your present challenges. And when you get vision, the Bible says people without vision, they perish. But when we get vision from God, in vision, there's hope. In vision, there's faith. In vision, we could see a brighter tomorrow. We could see increase. We could see prosperity. We could see success in the future. And what God wants to do in this period of time, even today and getting us ready for 2021, he wants us to get prepared and get in a position that we look forward to 2021. Because if you look at your past and you're determining your future based on your past, it could really make your past kind of dim. I'm not looking for 2020 to get my inspiration from 2020, for 2021 from 2020. I'm looking for my inspiration for 2021 from God. And God has a plan. It is for good and not evil and a hope and a future. It doesn't matter how the economy is. It doesn't matter um, if the pandemic gets worse. All that stuff has nothing to do with the vision of God. God's vision is bigger than any challenges you're facing. You guys understand that, church? So what we're going to do is spend a little time, and today is more instruction than anything, and we're going to do five things to prepare for 2020 or get ready for 2020. Say this word with me, preparation. preparation. Say this word, get ready. Now, being prepared and getting ready is a big thing. And um, this is what I want to, I want to read a scripture in Proverbs 6, 6, 6. Um, through eight. It says this, lazy people should learn a lesson from the way ants live. Now, when we describe laziness, when someone's lazy, this is what it means. They know what to do, but they procrastinate and they talk themselves out of doing it. So they know what to do, but they talk themselves out of doing it. Lazy people usually know what to do, but they they never actually do it. So they could be, they could talk a big game, but they never take action. Says, so, so now he's saying, make sure, and we've all been lazy in different areas of our lives, but he says, make sure you look at an ant because you can learn a lesson from an ant. Let's look at an ant. What lesson can I learn from a little ant? Well, they have no leader, first of all. That means they have no one pushing them. They have no chief. Or ruler. But they store up their food during the summer, getting ready for winter. Now, right now in winter time, you don't have an ant problem. And the reason you don't have an ant problem in the winter is because ants right now are underground. Why are they underground? Are they dead? No, they're not dead. They're not hibernating. They're eating. They're living their life. And how are they eating if they're not out and about getting cakes and candies and everything else in the summer that they get? Because they, they got it and they didn't eat it all. They stored it up. Because the ant instinctively knows winter is coming. And what he's saying, human beings sometimes are not as smart as ants. Challenges are coming Opportunities will also come. And, I, and I've also learned this, that opportunities are sometimes wrapped up in challenges. And if you're ready for the winter, you can have, you can enjoy your winter season. You can enjoy the opportunities and challenges. 
you'll get victories because you were prepared. Now, those that aren't prepared, the winter seasons overwhelm them. They majorly get depressed. They get major breakdowns. Their families don't survive. And some people even go back to their drugs and old lifestyle because they were prepared for the challenges or they were not prepared for the opportunities. So this next year will be full of challenges and opportunities. For those, now those that are prepared will be able to take advantage of the opportunities. Let's talk about preparation. I got some quotes here and this was, this is a quote. Success is where preparation and opportunity meet. Bobby Unser said this, and he's a race car driver. Um, Abraham Lincoln said this, give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. He goes, I'll get that ax ready, get the ax ready, get the ax ready, sharpen it, get it real sharp. It could it just, it, it could, it'd be like a razor. So when I hit that tree, it will do some damage. What he was saying is, you could continue working with your dull ax without preparation, and you'll be there working twice as hard and not getting anywhere, kind of running on a treadmill, getting tired and worn out and not getting any results. And I think there's nothing more discouraging than putting effort in and getting no results. And part of it is that we're not prepared. This is not a time to get jealous of others when they start succeeding, because if you prepare, you could get the same results as somebody else. Don't spend your whole life hating on successful people. You can be one too. Right? Don't get jealous. Well, if I had a husband like, like her, yeah, I'd have a great marriage. Okay. But that, that's true, maybe. But the idea is work on you. You be the wife God called you to be. Maybe the husband can turn around. I don't know. But it has to start somewhere. You get prepared. Right? Prepare for your miracle. Prepare for your breakthrough. Prepare for your future. Prepare for, prepare for, prepare for your ministry. Prepare, prepare for your career. Start getting ready for more. Start getting ready for, for a graduation. Start getting ready for the next level. Start getting ready right now. Your future begins today. Preparation. There was another quote on preparation. It's anonymous. And this is what it said. Preparation time is never wasted time. Now, I might feel that way. You're going to school. You're coming to our growth classes. Wow, that's a waste of time. Preparation time is never what? It's never wasted time. You know, I remember when I was going to um, Cal State San Bernardino and getting my bachelor's degree in business, I thought this thought so many times. <clears throat> this was a thought I thought, what a waste of time. Because I really felt like half the stuff I'm learning, I'm, like, I don't, I'm not interested in it. I'll never use this. Like accounting, I thought that was great, but I was never going to be an accountant because I, I'm really bad at it. So I'm, I was there, and, and, and I took some management classes, and all of it together. At the end, when I was done, I go, well, I got a little education, no doubt about it, but great. But, but when I was done, preparation time is never wasted time. And I started realizing as I started going through life, I needed an accountant at work, the management class. All of it started coming together. And then I also realized that there was a process that I went through starting and finishing that built my character to handle the challenges of life. Preparation time is never what? Wasted time. Okay. One last one, Alexander Graham Bell. He said this, before anything else, preparation is the key to success. Before anything else, preparation is the key to success. Now, Jesus, do you know how much time he spent doing actual ministry? He started his ministry at 30 years old. He died at 33 years old. So what was he doing for 30 years before he started his ministry? It was 30 years of preparation 
for three years of ministry. Some of you in this room, you feel like I should be farther ahead than I am right now. And you've almost discouraged yourself because I had a goal to be farther ahead than I have right now. But, but I'm going to give you some good news. The taller the building, the wider the foundation and deeper the foundation. Some of you right now, people are going to think as God begins to do some great things in your life and they see the hand of God's favor on your life, they're going to be thinking, where did he come from? Where did she come from? Out of nowhere. And you're going to be saying, no, it wasn't out of nowhere. You don't understand the 20 years of trials, tribulation, and preparation for this moment. This next year is going to be a year for the prepared. Get prepared. So we as a church, when we talk about preparation, there is, I would say, a system or things that we do every single year to get prepared for a great year. Jesus did these things. We're going to do these things. I'm going to give you five things that we're going to do to prepare for 2021. Number one, join our 21-day fast. Jesus started his ministry with a 40-day fast. How many days? Now, Jesus' fast was way more difficult than the fast me and you're going to be doing. Jesus did a complete fast. That means no water, no food for 40 days. No social media, no Facebook, no ESPN, no Sunday, Sunday afternoon football, nothing. Without Sunday football, I don't, I don't think I could do that one. But for 40 days in a wilderness. And, and he didn't do his fast in a house with air condition. Right? He did a fast in the middle of a wilderness with snakes, weather, wild coyotes, lions, all that stuff they had out there. 40 days being all by himself. If Jesus fasted for 40 days to get prepared for three years of ministry, I believe we could fast for 21 days to get ready for 365 days of ministry. Preparation. We don't fast to fast. We fast to draw close to God. We fast to build our relationship with God. Now, we're going to do a corporate fast. That means all of us working together. One of the reasons that we do corporate fasting is to bring us all back on the same page. Because there's been so much division and demonic plans to divide us all over the place. Our opinions have superseded our mission. We need to get back on the same page. And once in a while, God will call a corporate fast so people will get back to him, get back to the main thing. Serving God, loving God, loving people, and fulfilling our purpose here on earth to make disciples of Jesus Christ. That's what we're here to do. So many mindsets out there. Why don't we just go ahead and spend 21 days to first get united as an army so we could be effective as an army? 21 days. Now, corporate fast is not an idea that I came up with or any pastor came up with. God's the one that came up with the idea of corporate fasting because God's not just interested in individuals. He's interested in families as well. He's interested in churches as a unit. He's also interested in cities and he's interested in nations. And in scripture, God would sometimes call a whole nation to fast, to get back to him. Boy, do we need a fast as a nation nowadays. Is it too late for America? I know it's not too late for us. I know it's not too late for your family. And this is what God is saying. Let's start a corporate fast. Look at, look at Joel chapter 2, verse 12 through 15. No, 12 and then 15 and 16. It says, this is why the Lord says. Who says? Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting and come with fasting and weeping and mourning. There has to be a time where we take God serious. But not only take God serious, take our sins serious. 
When he's saying turn to me, there's, there's an assumption you've turned from me. You've turned away from me. Return to me. And what caused you to turn from me in the first place? It was sin. There was a sin that took over your life that caused you, and it was a moment. It could have been a video. It could have been a friend. And you said yes to it. And then when you said yes to it, there was a breakup. And you left the Lord. But what's so crazy about God, he goes chasing after you because he's a good shepherd. He says, son, daughter, you're so far away from me. Your drugs have taken you away from me. Your immorality is taking you away from me. Your career is taking you away from me. Your hate has taken you away from me. And, and God is saying, that's why you're so miserable. And he comes knocking at your door and he says, come back. He goes, but come back serious. Be willing to fast. Be willing to mourn. Be willing to cry. Why? Mourning means I'm dead to the sin. I'm dying to that lifestyle so I could turn back to you. Fasting causes repentance. Let's turn back to God. So he, he calls a corporate fast. It's, turn to me now while there's still time. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together. What does he say? Call them all together. This is what I'm doing in 2021 or 2020 and 2021. We're calling the people together. We need to all, we've been scattered all over the place. It's time for us to, all of us to come back together. And, and I tell you, the devil does not want us together. He wants us separated. He wants us isolated so he can continue to speak to us. But there has to be a time that we say, no, I'm done isolating myself. It's time for me to get back in position. It's time for me to get back with my brothers and sisters. It's time for me to get back in the house of God. It's time for me to get my worship back. Some of us have exchanged our worship music for rap music. Not Christian rap music. Gangster rap music. You exchange your worship music for the top 40. You exchange 90.1 for 99.1. Your worship has died. Your joy has gone. Your focus is no longer there. Your devotion to God and the church has dissipated. But God is saying, come on, church. Come back to me, but let's come back with force. Let's come back with passion. Let's come back putting me first, even above food. <laughs> Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Gather all the people, the elders, the children, and even the babies. That's cold blood right there. We're talking about that. Call the bridegroom from his quarters and the bride from her private room. What are you saying? Even if they're on a honeymoon, it's time to come back. Because that honeymoon is not going to last if God's not in your life. Matter of fact, that marriage won't last if God's not in your life. So right now, cancel the honeymoon and get back in the presence of God so you can have a healthy marriage in the future. But he said even the babies, when God calls a fast, He's serious. Little Xander's going to have to fast. <laughs> That's my grandson. Like I've never called the babies to fast with me. He goes, they can handle it. They're part of God's people too. But God called this fast. It wasn't I called a fast. It wasn't a man called a fast. It was God called this fast. Now Jesus expects us to fast. Now Jesus talked about fasting. And he used a word that's interesting. He used when you fast. He didn't use if you fast. So there was an assumption that believers fast. And look what the scripture says in Matthew 6, 16. He goes, and when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled 
so people will admire them for their fast. And I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. He gave instructions on fasting. What he's saying is you do not fast for people to impress people, to show off how religious you are at work. And when you're fasting, don't look all miserable. Why, why, why are you so miserable? I'm fasting for the Lord, God Almighty. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then your friends are going to say, wow, you fast? What does that mean? I am doing without food. I love God more than food. <laughs> and they're like, wow. I've never met someone so spiritual as you. Keep the donuts away. No, for God alone. Why is your hair messed up? I can't even comb my hair right now in this fast. I'm so weak. Man, you're spiritual. I know that. You don't have to say that. Say it again, though. And he's saying if you do that, this is what's going to happen. That's going to, own, going to be the only reward that you get. There's going to be no spiritual breakthrough. There's going to be no spiritual award, not rewards. Nothing's going to happen in the spirit. The only thing you're going to get is someone thinking you're spiritual, but you're not spiritual at all because you were doing it for pride. But he says, when you fast, do this. Look at this, look at fast. Verse 17, but when you fast, so when you fast, when? Amen. Comb your hair. <laughs> Wash your face. Brush your teeth. <laughs> Change your underwear. No, <laughs> uh, see, see, that, 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 was, that was not the Holy Spirit. That was Marco right there, so you guys know. <laughs> so I got out of control. See, that's why I need to fast right there then no one will notice that you're fasting, except your father will notice. And this is what God is saying. When we begin to fast, this is what we're doing. We're, doing, we're saying no to every distraction, including food, and say for this period of time, all I want is you, Father. I want to grow my relationship with you. Because it's that relationship with you that's going to get me through my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, the struggles of life. I need you more than I need anything this year. So this is what I'm saying. No to sin, no to everything that would distract me from you, God. I just want a relationship with you. And when you fast, this is what happened. Heaven notices. Fasting. Well, you know what's crazy? When you were in the world, you used to fast, but for drugs. There's no way you lose 30 pounds eating food. <laughs> Look, 30 pounds in two weeks. How'd you lose that? A diet. <laughs> well, you are on a diet. Drugs, 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 drugs. Running around town acting like people are chasing you. It's undercover, it's undercover. No, it's just, it was just pastor in his suburban. That's all it was. Get back. <laughs> fasting for the devil. If you fasted for the devil, why don't you just fast for the Lord? So we're going to do three types of fast real quick. I just want to say um, um, option number one is you fast until 6 p.m. every day. And then after 6 p.m., you have a salad and soup. That's it. Okay. Option number two is you could do a Daniel fast. A Daniel fast, real simple. Eat no meat, no sweets, and no bread. And someone's thinking, well, what am I going to eat then? <laughs> That's all I eat. Okay, this is what you could do. Drink water and juices. Eat fruits, nuts, and vegetables for 21 days. Or you could fast till 6 o'clock and then eat fruits, vegetables, and nuts and after 6 if you gain a whole bunch of weight after this, you ain't fasting right. I don't know. It's just in my genes. 
and your calories. Okay. <laughs> Option number three, a full fast for a selected number of days. That means drink only liquids. You choose the number of days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start the first 72 hours of three, three, three days. I'm going to start with um, a liquid fast uh, uh, for, for the first three days. And then I'm going to go f um, do a fast until 6 p.m. every day and have soup and salad at night. That's it. So I'm doing that. If you want to follow along with me, you could do that. Um, there's people that have di diabetes or the, um, they have health, health things they're fighting. If you want to do a Daniel fast, then you do that one because that might be healthier for you to do. But we, it doesn't matter what you do. It's just to do it for the Lord, draw close to God, and God will reward you. My reward is the joy of the Lord. My reward is the vision of God. My reward is hearing from God. My reward is, is, is having a deeper relationship with God. That's my reward. There's a reward for it. Number two. Say my number two. We're going to set goals. It's very important to get vision from God. And that's what I did. I spent three hours yesterday just writing down vision. God wants to do some new things in our lives he wants to give us some downloads of his will on earth to be done in your life. But if you don't spend time, turn off everything and say, God, speak to me. And what's your vision for my life? If you don't get that vision, this is what's going to happen. 2021 will just be a repeat of 2020. It's a repeat because you never got a new download. Every year you should be growing. Christians that are getting bored are Christians with no vision. When you start writing, it doesn't cost me anything to write down major vision. There was a day I wrote down this building. We had no money in the bank, but it had nothing to do with it. It didn't cost me nothing to write down the building. So I wrote it down. But I do know this, without writing it down, it would have never came to pass. Could it be that you're one business away because you're a business away because you never wrote down the business and it's still away from you because you've never received it. When you're writing it down, you bring a vision into seed form. You take it from the spiritual realm and you bring it into the physical realm. It could be your son or daughter getting saved. Why don't you go ahead and write that down that this year, my son, and I'm a believer for my son and daughter to get saved in the name of Jesus. This year is not going to be like last year. I'm going to re-engage in ministry. I remember where I used to serve. I'm going to start serving again in ministry, and you write it down. This year, I'm going to complete our growth classes. I started, but I'm going to complete it. This year, I'm going to join Leadership University, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to get my associate's degree in leadership at the Way World Outreach. I'm going to get prepared to a whole nother level, and you write the goals down. This year, I'm going to save some money. This year, I'm going to get an education so I can get certified for the next position. This year, this year, I'm going to start a, a Bible study in my home. This year, I'm going to be a part of a Power 12 care group, small group. This year, I'm going to lead a Power 12 care group. This year, I am growing. I'm not staying where I'm at. This year, this year, I'm going to get a job. This year, I'm going to get off welfare. This year, is going to be my year. I'm declaring it right now. This is going to be my best year ever. It will have challenges, but I'm believing God for greatness. Got it? Set goals. You know, when you're writing down goals, all it is is this, real simple. Is getting your desires on paper. And God will bless you for that. Now, if you're a believer, so it's my desires. Well, when you're a believer, your desires and God's desires are the same. Because God starts putting his desires in your heart. You start realizing that what you're writing down sounds a lot more spiritual than ever has been. Because you're a believer now. And there's nothing wrong with run, writing down some fun things that you desire. I want to take a two-week vacation with my wife this year. Well, we've never had the money. Why don't you just write it down? It don't cost you nothing to write it down. And who knows, there might be somebody that's ready to give you a gift, but they're waiting for you to receive it in the spirit. Right? You never know. Write it down. So 
Writing down goals is the same thing. It's kind of the same thing as praying. You're writing your request down. In Psalms 37, 4, look what it says, a promise. Someone say promise. It says, seek your happiness in the Lord. And he will give you your heart's desire. Seek your happiness in the Lord. Now, this is a qualifier. If you're looking for your happiness and your relationship with God, God says, I'll give you all the desires of your heart. When your heart's in the right place, I'll bless you with every desire in your heart. I will make sure it comes to pass because your heart is right. So goal setting without God It's just writing down dreams. But goal setting with God is prayer. It's just writing down your prayers. And I've been amazed what God has done. I remember writing down that we would be one of the top employers in the city. And one day we'd have a job staffing agency. And I wrote that down probably four years ago. And today we have a job staffing agency across the street. We have a training center across the street. And little by little, we're hiring more and more people every single year. Right now, we have a business across the street that they're, they're actually training the, sab- the disabled to have jobs that pay them regular wages. We're also hiring right now uh, mentors for the disabled that go to work with them. And what they do is mentor them at work and just watch them and they get paid full wages to mentor them. All these things are happening. I didn't know how it was all going to work out, but I knew this. The first step was writing it down. Someone say, write it down. So I'm going to ask you, you don't have to do none of it. You don't have to do none of it. But understand, if you don't set goals, this is what happens. God will not give you desires or give you answers to requests that you never made. You write it down. I've seen it happen. So this is what I would like for you to do. You, I pray that you do it because it will help you. I've never written goals down. Start now. Write three goals down. You don't have to write a whole bunch like me. I'm like a professional goal setter now. But you can write down two or three things that you believe in God for and partner up with God and watch those dreams and those visions come to pass. Write it down. Fill out, put, the, put, put it in the envelope. On January 31st, we're gonna, you could bring your goals here. Make a copy for yourself. Bring a copy here on January 31st, Goal Sunday. And then drop off your goals with with your address on on the envelope. And then in June, which is our anniversary, we'll send you back the goals that you wrote down. And you're going to be so surprised how many of those goals have already happened or many of them are on their way to happening. And you say, wow, I forgot I even wrote it down. It's true. Sometimes you even forget you wrote it down, but God didn't forget you wrote it down. Number three, bring a first fruit offering in the last week of the month with your word for the year. Now, I really believe this. At the beginning of the year, there's such thing, as, it's called a first fruit offering. It's, it's an offering from your first part of your increase. You have tithe and then you have a first fruit offering. Look what it says here. This is what it says. The first belongs to the Lord. Exodus twenty two twenty nine, Do not hold back your offering from the first of your harvest. What he's saying is, at this time of the year, you could give a first fruit offering as an act of worship to God and thanksgiving for what he's done and what he's going to do, right? Or you could hold it back. But he says, don't hold back the first fruit offering. Give me the first grain that you harvest. The first fruit offerings is an offering we give every year. In Nehemiah 10, 35 says this, we promise to bring the first part of every harvest to the Lord's temple year after year. And I I want to say one more thing about the first fruit offering. There's a special blessing of health and prosperity on the first fruit offering. Say it with me, special, special blessing. How many want a special blessing? That could only happen at the beginning of the year can only happen in the beginning of a season, can only happen as we give our first fruit offering. Look at this, Proverbs 3.8. Look at this promise. I love this promise. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit, say with me, first fruits of all your increase. 
So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. She said in this special offering that we give to the Lord, God says it'll be health to your bones. It'll be, what did it say? It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. But also it'll bring increase. It'll fill your barns and with overflow. So I don't got barns. All it means is this. It could be your emotions with joy. It could be your business with customers. It could be your ministry with wisdom and ideas. It could be your account, with bank account with savings. What he's saying is, when you give me the first fruits, this is what you're saying. You're dependent on me. You're still worshiping me. You're not worshiping the blessings. The temptation that we'll have as God begins to bless us is to put the blessings in the place of God. And now we're blessing chasers instead of God chasers. And what we're saying at the beginning of the year, God, you're, I know you're gonna, this is the beginning of major blessings upon my life, but I will not worship these blessings. I am a God worshiper. And out of this first harvest, I'm going to give you an offering that means something to me just to show you that you're first in my life, not things, not my money, not my job. You're my source. You're my joy. You're my victory. You're my peace. You're, you're who I find pleasure in. You're it. And some may be asking, what do I give for a first fruit offering? Well, there's different ways. First of all, just ask God. God, what can I give for a first fruit offering? Something that means something to me. The other thing we've been practicing is 365. That means I give a dollar for each day of the year. I, I give, and that's a lot of money, and so, but, I, but this means something to me. I'm gonna give 365, this is what I'm saying. I'm gonna have a dollar in each day of the year. This is what I'm saying. Before I get to that day, there'll be a seed and there'll be an offering. This is what I'm saying. You're first every single day of the year. It's even greater than that. Check this out. If you have a seed for every day of the year, you know what you can expect when you wake up in the morning? A harvest every single day of the year. So this is some of the stuff we're practicing. You be led by the Spirit. We're going to give you an envelope, I think, next week or something. But you could take that envelope, go home, pray about it. And then on this, um, January 27th through 31st, the last week of the month, we're going to bring a first fruit offering. Whatever God puts on your heart, you give as an act. Of worship. We're going to do it together. How many believe there's a blessing on this thing? Last two things. Attend all impartation services. Someone say attend. In, Act, in Hebrews 10.25 says, you should not stay away from the church meetings as some are doing. I, I, what he's saying is, and I know under COVID it's a whole different landscape, but we are talking, this is what we're talking about. Be careful that even under COVID, that you don't get in a habit of not coming together with the church. And I, I, and I, I could get this, if you have a family member and you have some really at-risk people in your home, I, I dig that. But if you're not at risk, let's just say this, you already got COVID. Use your immunity to worship. Take the next step. Don't listen to the word of God. Don't listen to... Don't listen, don't listen, I mean, listen to the word of God. Don't listen to your emotions. Don't listen to what I feel. Don't listen to the word of God. He said, look at this. You should not stay away from the church meetings as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as you see the day coming. There's nothing like us coming together. This is so encouraging to me. All of us in this house today, worshiping God. There's, there's nothing like coming in to the house of God in faith and worshiping God. So he's saying, so what we're going to do, you know what's so great? You could now have perfect attendance. Since the fourth grade, you haven't had a perfect attendance award. Next week is the first Sunday of the month. You could show up next week and then show up the next Sunday, and show up the next Sunday, and show up the next Sunday, and then show up for all impartations, and you could get a, a perfect attendance award for January. <laughs> and I guarantee you this, if you start doing that, you'll never be the same person again because you're going to start thinking differently. You're going to start, come on, believing differently. Your faith is going to go to another level. You're going to start seeing results you've never gotten. Why? 
because of this choice. And this is what's going to happen. We need you. And I'll even say this. The person next to you needs you. We need to come together and encourage each other. Someone say, encourage each other. And the last thing, take the next step in your spiritual growth track. That means sign up and attend, starting at the way, prospering at the way, or freedom at the way, or leading at the way. Sign up for the leadership university. Get baptized if that's your next step. Become an official member. Join a P12 group. Lead a P12 group. Maybe that's your next step. Start a joining watch party. Join a ministry. Start volunteering. What's your next step? Ask God what's your next step. And don't procrastinate. Take the next step. It's like in the summer. Don't sit there and just dip your, your little toes in the pool because it's just too cold. But if you jump in, you'll get used to it real quick and enjoy the whole day. Right? I remember when we went to, uh, we were on the vacation this last year, and there was a waterfall that you could jump off of. And, and there's no supervision, there's no lifeguards or nothing. So my girls went up there right away, and they just start jumping off this cliff. And they go, Dad, you next. I don't know if I'm smarter or I'm just more scared. I don't know what happened. But I was like, I don't want to do that. But all I was doing was sitting there on the side on a rock while they were having fun. And finally, they talked me into it. I'm not advising you could do this, but they, advised, they talked me into it. And I, it probably took me a half hour to jump. People thought I was a chicken. But I finally jumped off. And once I jumped off, I had a good old time. The water was freezing. And then it became warm. And I had a great time with my family. Some of you right now, you're not living an exciting life because you've been sitting there waiting for perfect conditions before you jump. And you're not committed. You're not committed to your future. You're not committed to the vision because it's scary. And God says, come on, step out. I got you. How many get that? Come on, let's jump. So take your next jump. So join the ministry on January 10th. We're, we're starting, restarting, um, starting at the way. You could join in. As a matter of fact, me and Pastor Robert will get involved in teaching starting at the way. Uh, the beginning of the year, we do this once a year. We're involved. You could start. You could go through the class with us. That's January 10th and 12th. I'm going to be doing the 12th. But, but, but join us. We'd love for that. Um, Leadership University. Two years from now, you could have your, your associate's degree in leadership. But if you don't start, you never will. You could start right now. And you could learn theology. You could learn evangelism. You could learn, I mean, you could learn all. You could learn, go th we go through the whole entire Bible and do a, 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 a study on each book of the Bible. It's awesome. But if you never begin the process, this is what happens. Opportunities will just pass us by. Not because opportunity wasn't for you. You were, just weren't quite prepared for the moment. Get ready for that. Preparation is the key. So let's get prepared. Let's, can we do these five things? And he said, what are five things? Well, review. The notes are on your app. You can look at the app. But not only look at the app, share it with somebody else. Next week, let's get ready. Let's get ready January 3rd. And also on New Year's Eve. Say, someone say New Year's Eve. That's Thursday. We're going to do a service online at 10 o'clock. So you could tune in at 10 o'clock. And you can watch us online, and we'll have a countdown from 10 to 12 and celebrate the new year still with the church body. Pastor Robert, can you please close this out? Thank you so much.